Hello. Today we're going to talk about the torus, a fundamental pattern in all of reality. I have a friend here with me as well who's going to help share this with you. His name is Christopher Love. Hi, I'm Chris, also known as Yana. Today, I will be helping my angelic friend Patch to expound the wisdom of love and spirituality in relation to the toroid. Let's get down to it. The torus is a very fundamental part of nature. So fundamental, in fact, that science is now seeing that everything moves through this form in one way or another, including ourselves. Very simply, the torus is a self-organizing system that all comes together at a space of unity and expands its energy out all around itself until it returns back to that original space in the center, and will continue to do it again. In quantum physics, mathematics, and generally all forms of science, this geometry really begins to bridge the gap between understanding how sacred geometry truly is the geometry of life. This is a geometry that breathes. It has life itself. Our very own hearts are the first and best examples of a toroid. The heart is where it all starts. The energy of our hearts flow outward in a toroidal fashion and are also received in a toroidal fashion. This way, everything we send out in love, we are immediately affected by as a result. In other words, our emanation of love is a gift to yourself as much as is a gift to the universe around you. You can look in nature to see these shapes everywhere. It's in oranges and apples. You can see it around tornadoes. The magnetic field of the Earth is a very powerful example, as well as how the atmosphere of the planet works too. Our modern scientists haven't really taken the concept of hollow Earth very seriously, even though this concept does explain a lot of fundamental theories about the Earth to which we don't really understand, despite all of our theories. Well, the idea of hollow Earth works in the exact same way as well. It demonstrates that our planet is designed from the core as a torus. The Earth is multidimensional, so we can actually have both a hot iron core as well as a 5D hollow Earth interior as well. For those who want to learn more immediately, check out Hollow Earth HD on YouTube. Moving on, we all know the fundamental principle of the universe of as above, so below. Well, this torus is even found at the size of galaxies. Atoms even have this very geometry as well. It's quite literally everywhere. From this basic expression demonstrates how life ought to be. All of the energy that emerges from the core travels around the torus and fuels itself. It also has the ability to give to other toroidal systems, which openly practice giving and receiving. It really sets a standard for how to do things, and we can mirror this and use it in our own daily lives as well. When you give and receive openly, you allow your energy to become toroidal. When we look at the interactions between one another, we begin to see the nature of giving and receiving. If we shift how we give and receive with others, we give ourselves an opportunity to receive feedback from what we emanate immediately. This allows for an enlightening transaction of energy between all life and allows all of our communications to resonate on that toroidal frequency of love. Love is not just a feeling, it's a vibration and a frequency that is connected through all things. The pure vibration that emanates around one's own heart and brings things together harmoniously is through a universal vibration we call love. If you look at the flower of life in 2D, it may be a little hard to tell. However, in three dimensions, one can truly see that it too is a torus. The flower of life is all geometries, remember? The torus is yet another one of those creation patterns that emerge from this, or rather is this form. It's so important to understanding everything. Even Nikola Tesla worked with this geometry and through it, he discovered a way to access free energy for the entire planet. Well, of course, all of the corporations of the world wanted to keep charging people for energy. And between them and the US government, all of Tesla's most amazing work was destroyed. In lesson 15, we talked a bit about this before, and now we can go deeper into it. The Institute of Heart Math, as well as Stanford University, among others, have now scientifically demonstrated that around the physical heart of your body, you have two toroidal fields, one inside the other, which are connected to the sacred space and the tiny space within the heart. Greg Braden has done a lot of work in explaining this to the modern world as well, and Drunvalo Melchizedek has put a lot of focus into teaching that this is some of the most important information regarding physical ascension. This is part of the understanding that is truly bridging the gaps between science and spirituality. China is doing some really amazing things. They have hospitals that are completely dedicated to the work of prana and energy, rather than the physical body of patients. In one experiment in a Chinese hospital, we see how the science of mantra is used to remove the cancer tumor of a woman in just two and a half minutes. A mantra is a sacred sound or chant that acts as an energetic formula for prayer or meditation. Mantras allow for us to connect to our source and emanate an audible frequency that focuses our mind to the sound and thus inwardly back to the source. When chanting from the heart, these doctors allowed themselves to focus on the reality that this woman was already being healed. 
In this, it allowed for the mind to bypass the normal confines of reality. As its intention totally flowed in and out of the source of which reality emanates itself. For everyone who has been skeptical of the idea of self-healing through intention, this video is proof that it's not just a plausible idea, but it's very, very real. We need only understand why it works and how it works. To come from a skeptical place and try, you will only see skeptical results. To come from a pure and true space, anything is possible. Nassim Haramin has made a documentary recently called Black Hole, which we did discuss in Lesson 18. He has done some really great work on this, and it's propelling our understanding of space into something completely new. He has demonstrated that the space at the center of the torus is literally the point of singularity, infinity, and the space where all consciousness truly resides, the source of the source field, and a space where all things are connected. In our modern physics, we don't really take consciousness and life into the scientific equations. Russian scientists are propelling their understandings of life to new levels and have even begun bridging the gaps of understanding gravity. Our Western model is not built to understand gravity and the Russians have developed models which harmonically see that gravity itself is a conscious field, an information field of love that holds things together. It's really profound and even quantum physics is beginning to look at this in new light. Remember in lesson 18, we talked about the vector equilibrium. This torus form and the cube octahedron go hand in hand it is the male and female aspects of each other, and the vector equilibrium, when put into use in science, can grant access to an infinite amount of energy through tapping into the space of unity of the source field, the zero point, the field of consciousness that science now knows connects all things. By understanding the Taurus and the nature of unity, one can really get in tune with themselves in relationship to the all. Let's also remember that considering our universe itself and everything within it is a reflection of this toroidal pattern, we can free our minds from the perspective that anything is separate, even as a void of a black hole contains the existence of everything supposedly outside of it. This is reflected in the psychic nature of those who, in meditation, dive into the void of consciousness, and those, also, who reach a state of Godhead awareness that includes all life in unity and love. The one is all, and the all is one. In the Taurus, the point of singularity, whatever consciousness is present, is the purest representation of the whole. The whole field is emerging from and returning to its original source, and all of it is conscious, and the singularity at the center is the space where it all came together and emerged out of. This can be demonstrated with the understanding of how the heart emerges in the body. If you remember from lesson 15, the heart is the first organ to come into existence and the rest of the body folds out of the heart itself and then it pulls the heart into the center. The heart is truly more primal, more connected to source and far more important than the brain. The heart is the space of love and love of all is what will get you back into the heart and out of your brain. In order to grow and become lighter energetically, we as individuals and a society must learn to understand how to really get back into the natural flow of things. This is what the natural flow looks like, among a few other forms as well. For many, understanding the Taurus from a left brain perspective is needed to really get back in tune with yourself. For others, you already understand it intuitively, and you just have to go with the flow and everything will work out perfectly. Well, thanks for tuning into our Taurus video. We're now gonna go hang out on Chris's channel to continue the discussion of our eternal nature and living in the heart. If you want to follow, this is Chris's YouTube channel. He's created his own series called Angel Academy and is definitely transforming into something beautiful. Thank you for spending your beautiful time with us and see you next time. The earth hasn't lived in their hearts for thousands of years, but the truth is it's really simple. It's easy. A child could do it. Anyone can do it. If you find your place into the heart, everything changes in your life. Uh, you, are, you, you don't do things physically out in the world. You do everything from within your heart, and the heart creates what your external world is. It's another way of being. It's an ancient way of being. We used to be this way, and we've long forgotten all of this stuff. You can do this. Everyone can do it. And if you do, if you, if you learn to live not in your brain, not in a logical thinking world, but in a world that is female and with a heart, and that you begin to love people and your life and your situations and everything that comes to you, uh, it get, your life becomes easy and simple and beautiful. So 
I hope you find your way, because I know you can do this. We all can do this. Bye-bye. Thank you.